Ya te hace rayitas entre blancos y negros, iglesia o mezquita, su blanca o gallego, que viata o rapero, que tú sin talegos o señores con dinero. Rayitas por cojones entre personas ideas, delimitan naciones, zonas y áreas. Dale gas, quiero salir de estas pedas si tú pones las rayitas de lo cool y la ortera. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Vice President of Marketing, Dominic John. So, wow, how do I beat that? Should I just leave now and just, uh... but anyway, welcome. Welcome to Pi World Barcelona 2018. It's an incredible city, incredible culture. And as we look at, we gather here this week, for an amazing event. Think about what's Barcelona famous for. It's famous for its architecture as well as the amazing dancing. But isn't it interesting and relevant that we're here today to hear about the architecture of the Pi system and how OSI Soft is evolving it and how you are using the architecture in your own organizations to do great things. So really exciting week ahead, a lot of presentations. So question to the audience here. How many of you have been to Pi World? Hand up. I'm really intrigued, because we only named it Pi World this year. OK? So just a bit of history for people. This is our 29th year of doing user conferences. And we renamed it Pi World. And the big question is, why? In this audience here, there is 60 different countries represented here. This is a community where people from all around the world 700 plus companies come to share their stories, their ideas, their digital transformation. If you look at the audience here on registration, we have over 300, are you still there? You can hear me on the front. Did we lose something? We're back on, fantastic. But if you look at the audience here, we have 350 end users of the Pi system. We have over 180 developers. 200 IT people, and this year we have 60 data scientists registered for the event. 
and there's a lot of different other roles, but it's no longer a, a user conference. It is a place where people passionate from every area of the organization comes to share their stories, their successes, their ideas. So we've got a great event coming on. The theme this year is digital transformation. It was digital transformation last year. It was digital transformation the year before. Here at OSIsoft, we believe people with data will transform their world. It's all about data. I want to ask a question in the audience. If you're presenting today, please stand up if you're presenting. All presenters, please stand up. OK? If you've ever presented at PyWorld or a user conference, no trick. If you presented at a user conference, also please stand up. If you've ever presented, ever present at our event. Look around you, gentlemen and ladies. These are the people that are transforming their world. Digital transformation. So first of all, sit down and thank you. I'll let you. But we're here to talk about digital transformation. And you, the presenters here, are coming here and sharing your transformations. It's a buzzword. But we have over 2,000 presentations on our website where people like yourselves have presented how you've been using data for decades to do great things. You've been digitally transforming for decades. But it's changing rapidly. The world we live in is changing. Most of us tend to have an iPhone or an Android. But we're at the 11th, 11th anniversary of the iPhone. It's amazing how things have changed. Our lives revolve around the smartphone. And then you start looking at some of the data out there. Connectivity. 3.8 billion people have access to the internet now on a regular basis. We are getting more connected. Then we look at the volume of data. It is estimated right now that 90% of the data in the world today was created in the last two years. Amazon now have 45,000 robots replacing humans in their warehouses. And then I hear about the top most sought after jobs today. Most of them did not exist 10 years ago. The big data architect, the data scientist, and I love this one, I want this job title, transformation manager. These didn't exist. So we're in a huge amount of change. And with that comes tons and lots, tons of opportunity, but also challenges. I don't expect you to read this, so don't worry. But this is a slide from an analyst just highlighting the opportunity and the challenge. This represents all the vendors they looked at supporting big data, 400 vendors, all opportunities for you. Who do you want to invest in? Who will succeed? Who will be here in three to five years' time? It's our opportunity as well as our challenge. We also have to look at our world in terms of the complexity. All this data, all this connectivity. This is the control center at Saudi Aramco, a 220-foot screen, and every drop of oil from the drill bit all the way to the high seas is tracked. And then you think about the world going forward. In 2025, they predict there is going to be 163 zettabytes of data. Who knows what a zettabyte is? Good, that makes me feel better. I had to look it up. That is 163 with 21 zeros. Think about it, 90% of it's going to be created in the previous two years. And there's an estimated 25% of that will actually be real-time data, time series sensor-based data that we here at PyWorld are experts at. Which really comes to the next challenge that you have here. We spent, IT spent 20 to 30 years trying to remove silos of information. I call this the data graveyard. It's the place where your data goes to die. And they've been trying to consolidate data into warehouses and data lakes. And as we look going forward, how do we, as an organization, consume all this data, these new sources, new sensors, and get this information exposed to the right people? This is a picture of our founder, Pat Kennedy, Dr. Pat Kennedy, CEO and founder. Here's a really interesting statement. He says that 
data is the, one of the only commodities that when you share it with more people, it gets more valuable. So as we gather here today and we start thinking about really where the transformation happens, it happens with the people and informing people. How do we get the right information to the right people? For the data scientist doing marine, um, machine learning, to the, uh, the maintenance engineer who's trying to resolve what's wrong with a pump. How do we get that in real time? And this is what we're here to discuss and share and learn at PyWorld 2018. And the good news is you own the tool today to embrace the opportunity and address those challenges. Today, you own the Pi system. For 20, 30 years, we have been in the business of getting every bit of operations data available in real time to whoever wants it for whatever application you want. So as you look at that scale and the scope of data, traditionally you were connecting automation systems and control systems, SCADAs, DCSs, PLCs. The new world you're getting now, cheap sensors, cheap connectivity, you can now afford to monitor remote activities, trucks that are mobile out there, new sources of data. And the OSI soft, the Pi system represents what we call a data infrastructure. That layer that is going to allow you to scale and expand the scope of data that you can consume and move into whatever environment, whatever application you need. And at Pi World today, you're gonna to see and hear stories from our customers, and you're gonna hear from our software development team of what we're doing to embrace this scope and scale of opportunity. And this is a journey, and I wanna reflect how this is moving forward and some of the three big things you're gonna see at this event that's different. If you look at where we were 30 to 40 years ago, we relied on engineers and their human intelligence to understand the asset and the process and use their intelligence to drive that operational efficiency. Tools like Pi brought real-time data and allowed people to use data to improve their decisions. We're evolving, things are moving forward. And the three things you're gonna see more of at this conference, the first is new connectivity, new sources of information. Where it was physically and economically not feasible to connect data, you can now do it. So you're gonna hear a lot of use cases and capabilities. You're gonna hear about analytics. This year at PyWorld, we have 38 presentations that focus on analytics. If you go back through two to three years, we only had five. There was a big focus. So as you look at that last bit of operational efficiency going beyond human intelligence, real-time access to data, it's about consuming more data, it's about doing the analytics. And the final part of this journey you're, you're going to be hearing about is really ar around sharing that data. Operational efficiency in, a, in an organization isn't just about that enterprise. It's about all the processes that happen outside, the, vendor, the vendors, the third party maintenance contractors you have. By able to share that data and go beyond the enterprise, you expose new opportunities to improve the operational efficiencies in your whole value chain. So you're gonna hear those three things. Connectivity to new information, a lot of analytics, and this concept of community sharing, scaling and scoping data at this event. So how are we gonna do this? You're gonna hear from our software development team. So in this morning's sessions, you're gonna hear from Greg LeBronc, our VP of product, and uh, Chris Nelson, our VP of software development. And they're gonna walk you through some of the, the latest roadmaps and technologies that can allow us to scale and scope and take advantage of this opportunity uh, and those challenges. You'll hear about a whole suite we're calling the pervasive data collection, allowing you to access more sources of data at the edge, at the sensors. And then how we're gonna scale and scope this with cloud services. And so you'll get to hear, hear that next. So as we look to transition into the main keynotes, I wanna just uh, highlight a couple of things. We have an amazing three days. We have over 120 presentations, 222 speakers, 79 customer presentations here. This is your compass. I encourage you, if you have not 
downloaded our mobile app, please download it. You can find people, you can meet people, you can schedule agendas. And really important to us is that you help rate our event. Not just the event, but speakers. We, we like you, rely on data. So we want to improve this event. If you, uh, if you like what you're seeing, rate it and say that. If you don't, we'd love to hear ideas. So please, at the end of every session, uh, rate it. And if you like this keynote, please uh, rate me highly. OK, so also, digital transformation, it's a teamwork. And we rely heavily on our partners, and you rely on partners to help deliver those transformations you need. I want to extend a huge thank you to uh, our platinum sponsor, Nokia, and our gold sponsors, uh, SAP and Seek. I encourage you to go to the Expo. The Expo has 36 different partners out there who extend the value of the data in the Pi system. Their integration services, applications uh, that you can learn and add to your uh, existing Pi system. So please do take the opportunity to, to visit uh, our partners uh, in the booths there. So let's get into the meat of the conversation. Let's get into the heart of the, the conference here. To kick this off, I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Pat Kennedy. He's going to give you an introductory vis uh, vision of what he sees as the system of the future. And then you're going to hear our software development team talk about what they're doing to go after that. So with that, if you can just play the video, that would be fantastic. If you wanted one word that describes the move out into the digital technology, it's scope. So the system of the future is going to be a lot of different systems. It'll be IoT, it'll be dedicated systems to things like vibration analyzers, connections into the SCADAs and control systems of the world. It will be calculations, it'll be manual inputs, it'll be data from financial systems. The benefits are basically benefits that just come from the added data because data has an extremely rare characteristic and that is when more than one person consumes it, it becomes more valuable. What we have to be careful of is we need to make sure that people can maintain it and that means a lot of automation, trying to get the productivity of the people actually maintaining this infrastructure as high as we can make it. An infrastructure has a couple of characteristics to it. The first one is if you know it's there, it's not doing its job because an infrastructure just sits there and works. And that's why you have to be very careful on the deployment of these systems because if you try to merge applications, projects, and infrastructure together, one of those will suffer from that. But there's two other aspects of these systems that have not been present. One of those is the security. There is a strong movement today by hackers to get into things that turn off and on, lights that go, water, whatever. That means that we're the target of these things. And that's going to be a distinct challenge. But then you talk about who owns the result of that data, particularly when you look at joint ventures, you look at remotely maintained and operated equipment, et cetera. How can we separate out and unambiguously keep the ownership straight on who owns the data? A lot of what we're doing is revolved around those issues. And then of course, the issues associated with scale as well. You're going to see a lot of very useful cases of our existing customers and our existing systems. What it does, it demonstrates clearly that much of the stuff you see in today is not going to go away for the next 20 years. What you're going to see are things in addition. So now you have to wonder what are those things in addition. One of them, of course, is being driven by the cloud. And so you'll see the work we're doing on developing algorithms and developing services that are running in the cloud and take advantage of the cloud, not just take the cloud and make it a big computer in the sky. So one of the messages that we want to bring is that you have to have this functional infrastructure for any of these other things that you have that you want to do to have them work at all. And that's one of the reasons we built Pi to be as narrowly focused as it is, because we have to be narrow focused to make it as reliable as it is. Okay.
So the system of the future from our CEO and founder, Dr. Patrick Kennedy. What a great time to introduce the first keynote. So this morning, I'd like to call up uh, Greg LeBlanc, our VP of product, who's going to talk about how are we developing out the system of the future. So